chance for that alliance to give more and more people opportunities to benefit and to grow with us as we start to shape up something which we've created we want more people involved it's called well-being lancashire i'm my name's jason jason kingston so i'm one of the partners at an organization called cube thinking but more importantly i'm here today to talk about well-being lancashire and why well-being is just incredibly important and particularly at this current time We've got an incredible set of people who we're going to be talking with and who are going to be explaining why they are endorsing what we are doing with Wellbeing Lancashire and crucially why they, with their endorsement, are going to provide attractive benefits to people who would like to join in what we're looking to do and with regards to the membership options that will come on with there. Now, this is not going to be a heavy PowerPoint session and hopefully you can see my slides now. You can see that. I'm just going to look to my right. Can you see my slides yeah. on there? Brilliant stuff. I'm just going to try and nudge those slides along there as we do it in a modern way. So what's the story? What on earth is this all about, Wellbeing Lancashire? Why have we asked you to give up 90 minutes of your lunchtime to talk with us today, to listen with us today and to share some of your thoughts? Well, quite simply, like I said, it started with a virus. We, from that, we formed a lunch club and it was a strong, strong need to match those wellbeing providers with those in need. We were hearing incredible need within Lancashire. We were also hearing constantly from different businesses who could provide wellbeing solutions who wanted to help. And we really just thought there needs to be a forum where we can start to match the two. Sorry for being animated with the hands. The Lancashire economy needs this and we needed to come up with a vision. So that talking shop over lunch breaks kind of rapidly grew and we created a vision. That vision was to create an alliance to make well-being a top priority for Lancashire. As you can see, I think, from what's behind me on there. The various different elements within there, but one of the key things that came from that is, it's no point just having a lunch club that's as useful as a chocolate fire guard. What we need to do is to create an alliance of well-being providers, firstly, but also an ability for the people who've got the need and the areas that have seen need We've got a way to plug in with that and that was really where we started to shape up we started to shape up and we saw opportunities there for accredit accredited struggling bolton vowels to say the word but for accredited providers to join in with us to perhaps in time to assist with things like social prescribing but certainly to have routes to market so there's a clear advantage in being part of an alliance and it seemed to be something that was just not missing or certainly in the format that we saw with the dynamism that we wanted to do and what we wanted to be in other words for lancashire well-being it matters it matters enormously so the group of us ourselves who came together for that and you can see quite a few of the faces on there somebody with dodgy glasses and you can see people there who are leading on our accreditation <laughs> side like emma you've got joe you've got deb's got Lee and various other people and that was great and that was fantastic and we had a wonderful session with people the great and the good in the region and a lot of them are on here with us now that was fantastic that was awesome but what we need is more members we need people to join up as members but what's the point why would you do that what's in it for you what's in it for you is quite simply a chance to be part not just of an alliance because that's all well and good and sounds very flash and fancy but that is as useless if it doesn't lead to something. There needs to be different types of membership and for businesses which can provide accredited services, there needs to be a formal structure. And Emma is gonna give some fantastic information later about what will be the requirements for the accreditation, but what's the membership? What's that all about? Free membership if you just want to be aligned with us, you just wanna be an ally of us, that's fantastic. So there's free membership where effectively you're just on the mailing list. That's brilliant and everybody who's signed up for this workshop here is very very welcome to be enrolled onto that we'll not do it automatically it's got to be gdpr compliant but we would expect that everybody who's on here we hope will have at least that membership there's a contributor membership that's 60 pound per month and that gives you the newsletter listing on the wellbeing lancashire website and that's an incredible visibility and the ability to submit content on our website and our social media channels too i think that's money well spent for 60 pound if you're a wellbeing provider then we've got the provider accredited, accredited, I can't say that word, accredited membership. That will normally be £499. 
which will give you the ability to obviously you've got the newsletter the listing and the ability to submit content but you've got the invitation priority access to well-being lancashire events a chance to speak with the people who are shaping the well-being need in the sector in the in the region but also invitations to members networking meetings where we can see where policy can be shaped where it can be influenced where it can be understood and we can see where the market forces are and eligibility for well-being lancashire service delivery projects too that is important we will be enabling teams to solve problems teams of well-being providers as we start to understand the needs and as we get approached with the needs part of that will enable you to be part of those teams if you are an accredited provider to provide services and provide the need requirements in the sector in addition you will also get access to the health innovation campus at lancaster uni and all the great stuff that follows on from that you'll get the northwest employee engagement group light membership which in itself provides incredible benefits and steve's going to be talking to you about that later and preferential rates in the roots of life magazine and in the events as well so you've got access to a market you've got access to the forums you've got access to the networks in other words nobody will be alone and that for us i think is quite a useful a compelling opportunity to bring yourselves to the party to find opportunities to provide your services in a wider way but also to plug into the right formal forums as well so what i want to do now i'm going to stop sharing my screen you be able to see the great background behind me from there then and i want to pass you over now my trusty sheet to make sure that I get everything in the correct way then into over to Steve to Steve Fogg. Steve Fogg is the chairman of the Lancashire Enterprise Partnership. He's also leader of the Seed Alliance. And Steve, just going to pass over to your good self now, just for a little bit of an explanation and an introduction to why wellbeing Lancashire is so important. And thank you. And here we go. Thank you. Um so I'm Steve Fogg. I'm the chair of the Lancashire Enterprise Partnership. Um, I also sit on East Lancashire NHS Trust and I chair the Seed Alliance, which is a, an alliance looking at health across Lancashire and South Cumbria. Um, why is this important to me? Well, if you take a look at the climate in the UK and Lancashire today, and you look at how COVID has impacted us so massively, then you will see that from a, across um, employment, from across education, from just general people living alone and isolating, it's created so many issues for them. Now, generally, people struggle to reach out for support and they need to reach out to trusted support, trusted alliances that they know can help them. And so I was so pleased when Wellbeing Lancashire set up and I was invited to one of their events just a few weeks ago. And I looked around the room and I saw so many people from business, from people who could provide support, all genuinely supportive of trying to make a difference for Lancashire. And, you know, when I sit and see that, I just get quite amazed by the amount of people that want to do good for people. Um, I've spent 40 years in business. And, and let me tell you, throughout my business career, I've seen great environments, great climates, and I've seen not so great climates created. And culturally, it becomes a challenge for businesses. Now, if I was to say to you that I spent probably the last six or seven years of my career very much focused on changing the climate in the workplace, changing how people could see and get support and feel free to reach out for such support as opposed to fear reaching out for support because there might be some stigma attached to it there might be some genuine fear of their future careers etc having done that and having created it within my own business such that we created a climate of positive mental health uh, let me tell you i saw a fantastic change in performance I found a fantastic change in people. People smiled, people talked more, people communicated more. I used to stop my business for an hour every few months just for people. And I'd say to them, I don't care if you go and walk around Preston Dock, I don't care where you go, just find the time to talk about the environment you're working in, the troubles that you've got and how we can solve them. Our performance went 
up. You know, people look at this, our performance actually went up. We were one of the best performing businesses around. And that's partly because we created the right climate for people to operate in. So, you know, when I see this for business, it's a massive, massive benefit for business. And I would urge all business owners, employees, employers to reach into this and seek support and advice and go through that process. Let's not forget the people who are self-isolating at home. Let's not forget the people who are struggling on their own, who don't easily get support and feel not so brave to reach out for it. And I think the more we create organizations like this, organizations like you all who are listening today, to be able to provide that support and reach out for people, then let me tell you, the difference it will make is huge. Now I say to businesses, if you don't get the moral argument, just get the business argument. It makes absolute business sense to create the right climate and the right environment. You can't do that without support. You can't, it's not a switch. You know, it's got to be authentic. It's got to be the right climate created. You have to have training. You have to have support. You have to have all those things put in place. But there are people here who I know want to reach out and support you. So, I, you know, I welcome the opportunity to speak. I welcome the opportunity to support Wellbeing Lancashire and I'll be right behind it all the way through and I'll be supporting it in every way I can. Even if I wasn't the chair of Lancashire Lep, and let me tell you, personally, I put my back in right behind it and make sure it operates, functions and does all the right things that we needed to do for Lancashire. So thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for the opportunity to speak and, and I wish it well now on its journey over the next few years. And I can't wait to see the vision and the output that it generates and the changes it actually can make to people's lives. Thank you very much. Steve, thank you so much for that eloquent introduction and also the passion as well. The reason why, why things like this are so important. And it's probably just to clarify, it's not just important if you're a provider of wellbeing services or if you're in need, but if you're an ally of that, if you're an organisation that wants to put a stamp on to say, look, we take this stuff seriously. Again, that's a critical reason to join up for membership. So it's not just for the providers and the suppliers and those who are in need, it's for agencies and for organisations to state we take well-being seriously and let's just be very clear in the current situation the challenges are incredibly high and if as an organization yeah, yeah. you take your people seriously you need to really step up to the plate and come to join the team so thank you for that really appreciated we're going to go over now to lancaster to the health innovation campus and to glenn glenn jones glenn is the commercial programs manager over the health innovation campus over at lancaster phenomenal opportunity there to plug you in as a member into the benefits of the health innovation campus but also to academia and also to the fantastic innovations over there in other words, it does what it says on the tin. Glenn, how are you doing? Fine, thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity to, to talk about the HIC and um, also to support your work and, uh, and hopefully collaborate going forward. I'll just uh, share my slides. Is that, that visible? Brilliant, yeah, fantastic. So, yeah. so I'm Glenn Jones. I look after uh, commercial partnerships and uh, stakeholders at the Health Innovation Campus alongside uh, a team of, of 10 others um, looking at all aspects of uh, healthcare, population health across Lancashire. The building, those that you, of you that have been lucky to, uh, to visit it already, is a lovely um, £41 million development that ran over the last three years. We were, we were unfortunate enough to nearly finish just as lockdown one started. Uh, um, but we moved in uh, towards the end of July and we've been actively working from there. We have some businesses in already. We offer co-location space. So there's a company called Chip Tech and a company called Cleartrace who are currently have their offices in here. And we're welcoming Northwest Cancer Research uh, next Wednesday. Uh, the offices we have are full. Uh, we have eight in total. Uh, just that people are taking a bit of time to come in. But it's a campus and we also have medical students in there as well. We've got about 150 uh, students at maximum on any given day uh, going through the five-year medical course. Um, I wanted to really talk about why, uh, in my view, the, the, the HIC is needed, if you like, the Health Innovation Campus and the Health Innovation One building. 
I, to me, there are five main stakeholder groups. We've got academics, as you'd expect um, with, the, with the university. We've done, as a university, we've done an awful lot of work with businesses over the years. The management school is, is world renowned, a quadruple accredited MBA. And we've learned a, a lot of European and other funded business assistance programs. Um, we obviously work a lot with clinicians, health staff broadly, not just the NHS, care homes, uh, you know, allied health professionals, practitioners, obviously students in terms of uh, campus and, and patients, citizens t to some extent through the research programs we have. But to me, one of the important things with the Health Innovation Campus is to up the engagement with our citizens, if you like. We're all patients, we're all service users it's difficult to come up with a term. So if you're living in Lancashire or further afield, then the hick is there for you as well. So I believe those five stakeholder groups together, we can make a difference to population health. We're about um, improving those long-term, uh, reducing long-term conditions, looking at the wide determinants of health. We do one or two um, hospital-based acute medicine interventions, but lots of what we do is in exactly this space that Wellbeing Lancashire arena, which is why it's a, a privilege to be able to work alongside them. So we're about collaboration. My role as a partnership manager, you know, collaboration, cat we catalyze discussions. We ourselves aren't able to solve those problems. What we can do is create the space for others to be successful in and bring those stakeholders to, to, uh, to, to the heck to, to work together. One of the things I wanted on the way in, actually, and we'll, we'll have a video fly through in a bit, is a sign saying, park your ego. Not just park your car, but park your ego. Because if we're to collaborate, we have to all come at this in a bit more humble and kind than in, in some times we've seen. You know, not, not dictate, but co-create, co-develop, and design a new way forward. And, and also... Lynn, oh, Lynn, sorry to interrupt, but just yeah. because this is incredible stuff. And the benefits which will be for the members of Wellbeing Lancashire who would have access to this, this is all what they would have access to, is that right? Yes, indeed. I'll, I'll come on to talk about the Hick community. There's a hashtag, awesome. Hick community. No, no. Love but it. That, that's, as I said, really, the building is a building. It's, it's a lovely building, but it's just a fabric. Yeah, yeah. What we need to do is get the soul of it into there. And that's through all the collaboration work we do. And... Yeah, every member of Wellbeing Lancashire and anybody else that wants to come along are welcome to get in there. Once lockdown lifts, uh, uh, and hopefully 2nd of December, um, we'll be back to what we were doing before, which is hosting meetings for people who aren't, you don't have to be a resident in the building, you can come in and just use the space. It's a public space, I suppose, in as much as that it's open. There's a great coffee shop uh, selling Atkinson's coffee. Um, some good healthy food, no chips, unfortunately. So it, it'll be as um, as exciting a space as we can make it. If we don't create those collaborations, if we don't get people having casual collisions, as we've called them, or creative anarchy, then we're nothing. So yes, that offer is always there to everybody. The that's hick to awesome. Me, sorry. Yeah, I was sorry, say, that's you. awesome. Sorry, yeah. fantastic. No, no, it's okay. So to, to me, the, the hick is a great thing, but it's special for other reasons. Well, Lancaster University, Obviously, I have to fly the flag for my employer. You know, we are a top 10 uh, in the Times top 10 universities uh, of the, globally. We've got some great uh, courses, a lot, a, quite a diverse range of, of qualifications you can develop. The medical school and sports exercise science is part of what we see, but there's all manner of stuff across the university. Um, we're part of the Northwest region. I've always worked in the Northwest. Um, I worked at Lancashire Care before I came to the university where we had this innovation test bed. And one of the things we used then to secure that 1.7 million funding was to sell the region because we've got everything we need. We've got, you know, uh, granite and water in Cumbria and we've got urbanization in Preston and Chorley. We've got great infrastructure. We've got airports. Um, we've got lovely scenery. I'm lucky enough to see green out of my windows. So we've got everything. It's, a, it's something we can sell at to attract employers and uh, employees as well. Uh, and as I mentioned before, the business support the university does is, is very well rated. It's estimated that for every one pound in funding we receive, we have an 18 pound impact in the local economy. So that's new jobs, new products, new services and new businesses. So again, if you're starting up, come to the university. If you're already existing and wanting more, come to the university and we will help and, and support you. So I said, the, the ambition is to improve population health out, outputs, outcomes, and impact. 
outputs are immediate, outcomes maybe in, this, in six months, an impact possibly after two or three years. An impact is what we need, it's where we make the change in the population. You know, if Mrs. Miggins in Blackpool has a better outcome after the work we've done, then that's the impact we're after. We haven't, we've had six months, um, as I said, so there's not much of a story at the moment, other than, you know, we've had some great meetings already with, with the guys from Wellbeing Lecture. We've had uh, lots of companies touring and we've moved some in, lots of students, but we're here to co-create a story as well, I think, about what we can do through the HIC uh, with the partnerships that we've got. Lynn, that's absolute gold dust, absolute gold <laughs> dust. Thank you. No, and as I mentioned, HIC community, um, we're nothing without the partnerships. I'm very much a people person and you know, I've enjoyed the, being able to use the campus to meet real people in real time and, and uh, not, not through screens. It, it works fine as we're doing now, but I think in the end, it'll be down to that community. So being part of the HIC community is the offer to everybody, really. Uh, being a citizen, be you a business, a charity, uh, a, a local uh, church or chapel, whatever, just come in and be part of this and tell us what you want and we will listen. The team is here to listen to you. Perfect. What I'll do now, I'll show you um, a video. Uh, it's a shot through a, uh, by a drone. And then I'll quickly, if I've got the time, just take you through each floor and talk about what we've done to try and engender some of those conversations. So I'm just going to, I think I'll have to stop sharing my screen and reshare. So, uh, Wayne, I'm just doing a time check. I reckon we've got about two minutes to go. Okay. Is that right? Oh, yeah, fair enough. Like a real time uh, fashion. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, the, the video, I think, is about a minute. So I'll, um, let me just get back. Magic to stuff. You. We've got strong coffee. <laughs> yeah. And you've had enough of me talking. No. Uh, so let me share the screen video. Where are you? Okay. Uh, there's, there's no music soundtrack, so I'll, I'll just talk through it. So is that visible to you? Absolutely fantastic. Okay, so so this is from the outside. We've seen a picture of it, but it's clad in this sort of uh, screening which emulates the trees around it and provides sort of dappled shade inside is to sound like an architect. One of the big assets as you walk into the lobby and look to your right is this, the Spanish steps, wood clad, little amphitheatre in a way there's a bit of a stage at the bottom and the steps are double height in the middle so you can sit on them it'd be great for ted talk type things uh, or just local lectures or in the evening if you've got um if you want to do a bit of shakespeare even because we do <laughs> we actually do have a balcony overlooking this so you could, you could definitely do your own YouTube. and that's perfect for members absolutely yeah. perfect well, for that's members it, yeah. to do and well, this stairs leads you leads you up to um the the second floor the second floor which is where the cafe is so the hive cafe is uh, as you'd expect from the university of being on campus elsewhere co coffee and tea or other uh, fruit based drinks plus a range of healthy foods uh, and decent stuff not uh, yeah sorry i don't want to insult healthy food but yeah um, it, it's tasty it's good it's locally made here on, on campus and plenty of room uh, even in with the restrictions we have we've not had to change much in terms of layout and space and seating because it, it's an airy bright uh, well ventilated um, building anyway brilliant and that again is opportunities for members to use these facilities i've yes. used these facilities myself and the good the great yeah. spaces and also for a lot of our members particularly who will live more local to lancaster again what a fantastic spot to Media. Yeah, no, I, I've been so privileged in a way to, as people have come in for the first time since March, people have been meeting face to face for the first time in HIC, and that, that's been a, a, you know, a nice thing to be able to uh, allow that to happen. One of the assets we've got is this room we're looking at here again. On, this is on the ground floor. This is the innovation lab, conceived as a workshop space, very flexible furniture. Uh, the, the, the walls are going to be painted with whiteboard paints and magnetic paint, so they can be you know, like as large as whiteboards if there's such a record to go for. And it's a brilliant forum for capturing ideas, for working ideas, and also for yeah. drawing an academics. And I think for the last minute, just as we bring things through on here, Glenn, any final advantages, other advantages? I mean, I'm certainly a, a massive fan, and I think as a, as a membership benefit to yeah. members of Wellbeing <laughs> Lancashire, to so have access to this for that membership level is... Incredible. Yeah, really. Yeah. So when we can hot desk again, you. You, you can be hot desking from here as well. The business assistance programs, we have a, a myriad from everybody from a startup through to an established company. 
we, we will collaborate on funding if, if it's appropriate and bring in academics. Uh, there is a resident program in the HIC for those businesses that are in residence or partnering with us, which will include access to academics and uh, you know, anything else we can conceive of really. So again, some feedback on what we can do to help uh, combined with the offers the university and the HIC can provide. Um, it's all there to be done, I think. And to Perfect be stuff. So Glyn, thank you so much for that and for showing us that overview of the Health Innovation Campus. To be totally honest, we could have had half an hour on that. Okay. It's so much <laughs> I've got amazing one content. Hour if you want, <laughs> it's been absolutely fantastic and it's been an absolute gift to see what a bonus to the membership that this would be. And as somebody who's up there very often, or was pre-lockdown, one thing to mention, membership will last for a year. It's annual membership. So even if we are having a little spot of lockdown, we're still digitally connected. But crucially, we're not going to be locked down forever. Glyn, exactly. thank you so, so much. Absolutely fantastic. And more details will be there, of course, to members as part of their membership pack. Yeah, just ask. Move brilliant stuff so I'm going to move over now to the wonderful Deb Brooks and Deb Brooks is the founder of Roots to Life the co-founder also of Wellbeing Lancashire and Deb's has got a brilliant offering here that she's going to be explaining with regards to members of Wellbeing Lancashire and what she can provide Deb rather than me talking about it let's come over to you Oh, thank you, Jason. Um, and a, a real warm welcome to everybody. And thank you for being part of this amazing uh, group, Jason. And uh, it's great that we started to collaborate from, um, you know, a coffee morning, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And how it's grown into all of this. So, yeah, I'm really excited. Um, yes, yeah, so um, some of you may know me, some may not. I run the Roots of Life um, Health and Wellbeing events. Um, predominantly in Lancashire and Cumbria. I've been doing those since June 2017. Um, my vision was that back in um, sort of four or five years ago now that I, I, I felt that alternative health and wellbeing was massively needed. Um, and we've got some amazing practitioners out there that are doing some amazing work. Um, so the events were born and um, the last event back in March, just be a week before the lockdown, was the busiest I've ever, ever seen it. Um, so my offering to, to uh, as members is, um, you know, the services that we provide. One is um, the events, which are every two to three months. Um, I also launched a magazine, a wellbeing magazine last autumn, um, which is put into GP surgeries when we can, major supermarkets, health and wellbeing shops, spas, gyms, chemists. Um, inside the magazine, there's lots of editorial. It's not just full of adverts. Um, and, you know, a, as part of this package, um, you'll get access to, to membership um, of that. Um, the other thing that um, we are co collaborating with um, is the Lancaster University. And in 2021, we're looking to launch an app, um, an interactive app, which will, collab which will obviously sit alongside the magazine. And you'll be able to um, put on there your vouchers, uh, discounts of your offerings. So if you're a, a massage therapist, um, you know, you, you might want to do uh, buy one, get three, you know, something on them lines. Um, and also anybody who's doing events, workshops, training, um, you can put those on this app as well. Um, obviously, at the moment, due to COVID and things, we are... Um, doing virtual events we've done two in the last few months which have been really good um, also um, which has been really helpful to people is uh, Roots of Life have been doing health and well-being talks every Monday at 11 um, called Keep Well Monday so we have a different practitioner from different backgrounds um, providing great talks um, so yeah, so that's a little bit about the offering that we're offering, Jason. Yeah, that's absolute gold dust. And I think just because, particularly because so, you know the needs and you were there at the shaping of the needs of wellbeing Lancashire, the fact that you're kindly providing this vehicle is absolute gold dust. Yeah, Thank I, you. I, 
I'm very, I'm very strong to, to, I mean, the NHS is doing a great, amazing work, but I really feel like there's so many amazing map practitioners out there in the alternative world. We really need to see more, uh, more of their services being used more than ever. And I think there will be. I think, you know, we, we really have to highlight um, and take more self-care, you know. I think you're right. I think we do. I think on the self-care piece perspective, particular we need to take care and there are different routes to well-being there are different elements to that absolutely Debs thank you so so no, much for okay. everything you've shared on that and um, and also it's the fact that there's so many different channels that people can engage with so we've seen the physical channel up at the health innovation campus Debs with regards to the events there's going to be virtual things and also where we are. We are actually at the home of Wellbeing Lancashire today over at the Wellbeing Farm over in Edgeworth in Lancashire, uh, on the Bolton side of Lancashire, but in Lancashire on there. And this is an incredible venue for us to use and it's our home and where we often do stuff. We've even got trees inside. How good is that? It's so I'm going to pass you up. I'm going to pass you over now to Steve, Steve Smith. And Steve is going to tell us about the Northwest Employee Engagement Group, amongst many other things as well. Steve, brilliant to have you with us. Thank you again. Brilliant. Thank you for inviting me in here. Yeah. And you. I have about lots of things. So uh, for those people that, that don't know me and never met me yet, congratulations, because um, I think I know everyone in Lancashire, um, probably know everyone in the UK, actually. But um, I've got two passions. So I'm, I'm Steve Smith, and these, these two passions that I've always had for all my life are really simple. Number one is people, and number two is business. So about 20 years ago, I, I, I sort of worked at finding a way to bring them both together. So 20 years ago, I set up a, an engagement consultancy called Anthem. And since then, we've worked with um, hundreds of organizations, probably about six or 700 different organizations throughout the Northwest. And we've actually done 2 million surveys. We hit the milestone while we were in the first lockdown of 2 million surveys. So that's a lot of surveys. Um, we've got a lot of data. Um, it's all about finding out what's going on inside these businesses because, again, the objective, the reason why I do what I do and, and why should anyone bother is my, my goal is to help organisations to, to build a work environment in which people can, can be fantastic. You know, that's what I'm all about. So it's building this environment and helping leaders and business owners to create this environment in which people can be fantastic at work. So I got involved in, in Wellbeing Lancashire sort of at the start of this because, uh, well, number one, I was asked, um, and it's always nice to be asked to, to get involved in something, and it's certainly right up my street. But I think that we do need to look after ourselves better, even before the pandemic. You know, one of the things that I talk about is, is well-being and mental health and the feeling of, you know, we're at work for so much of our, our life, we've got to at least enjoy what we do. You know, we've got to feel looked after. We've got to feel part of something special. I went to, um, I went to the library of all things. So people shop on Amazon, but I went to the library once and, and I was looking for some sort of help others books. There was loads of things on self-help, but there was nothing fantastic on how you help other people. So I think that we all need to help with certainly our own well-being. You know, I've, I've had my challenges over the last few years. Um, in terms of sort of well-being and, and mental health and all this, and we really need to look after ourselves, but we need to look after each other as well, especially now during this COVID pandemic when nobody really knows what's happening, how long it's going to last, when we're going to come out of it. Um, it's got to be the number one priority. You know, probably before the pandemic, the number one priority for people working in, a, in an office environment was about communication and feeling part of something, but that's been overtaken. Certainly in the pandemic, it's about well-being and it's about looking after each other. So that's why I'm involved in, in, in uh, well-being uh, Lancashire. So alongside my main sort of day-to-day -day business as, as uh, MD of Anthem, I'm what's called the Chief Vision Officer of NUIG. So NUIG stands for the Northwest Employee Engagement Group, which will, still, which will soon become the Northwest Employee Experience Group. That's going to be one of the main changes. Um, and this is a group of, of organisations, we've actually got about a thousand organisations involved in it now, who employ combined about a million people. So we've got, you know, if we can turn the dial up on engagement, just 0.1%, you know, we're going to make an awful um, amount of good 
you know, good things that are happening with, um, with people throughout Lancashire and throughout the Northwest. So my, for my part, one of the things that I wanted to do, because I remember at the, um, the launch event that we had, and Jay was on about action, you know, getting stuck in, you know, and that yeah. sort of really resonates with me. You know, that's what I'm all about, getting stuff done. Um, so, so that was um, something that I really wanted to get involved in. And one of the things that I thought immediately that I could help with is any organization that wants to get involved and get active with Wellbeing Lancashire, we should give them what's called a, a, a light membership, which covers all our events virtual. So we've got 12 virtual special interest group events throughout the year, which you're more than welcome to come and join us with. And you'll learn an awful lot. You can also share your experience. Again, that's what the group's all about, sharing experiences and learning from each other. And Steve, also, I've been on Steve, yeah. I've been on some of your events digitally yeah, yeah, and otherwise, yeah. and they're absolute gold dust. And one thing is you may go into them events on your own, you never could you never leave alone. Absolutely. You become the me becomes the we in those events. So just yeah, positively yeah. as as a, somebody who's attended those gold dust again. Well, we've just done we've just done another uh, session this morning actually, prior to this one. Um and Lee Lee Chambers was one of the uh, the participants, so we had a great session um in that. The second thing that you get as part of your New Week Light membership is something called the New Week Engagement Tool. So this is a, a one-stop shop for everything engagement. We've got videos, we've got presentations, you know, we're, we're able to share everything that, that members can, um, can give us and what to talk about. So we'd love that this, um, it, it's almost like a, an online course, you know, that you can follow and go through so that you learn more about people skills, you know, you learn more about engagement, what it is and what it's not. And, and that's something that I'm really passionate about, about growing. So we'd love you to get involved in New Eag. Equally, we'd love you to get involved in Wellbeing Lancashire because it's, it's the, both of them really are two communities. You know, I think community is going to be a really sort of big word for us. And they go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got to look after people at work. You know, we've got to look at, as leaders of, of businesses. We've got, to look, we've got to look after people in our charge, you know, in our care. We've got to care for them. We've got to look after them and make sure that they're well looked after and they're healthy you know, and able to, to work fantastically for us. So that's what, that's what I'm all about. Steve, that's absolute gold. I keep saying gold dust, gold simply dust. because there is so much gold dust in what the offering is. And having seen, as I said, what is on offer there up close, it is an incredible opportunity. And together, what we can act aim to do is to make Lancashire the kindest county. Let's just say it for what it is. Let's try and make Lancashire the kindest county. Let's provide fantastic opportunities for providers of wellbeing solutions to connect with those who've got the need. And also for everybody who's involved in that ecosystem, let's use the fancy word, in that situation, there's a chance to be involved and nobody should be alone in there. So Steve, thank you so much. Welcome, my pleasure. Brilliant stuff. So from here at the Wellbeing Farm over in Edgeworth on the Moors in a socially distanced safe way, we're going to move you across now to Lee, Lee Chambers. And Lee is one of the co-founders of Wellbeing Lancashire. Um, we look at him as our digital guru and guru of many different things. Lee, great to have you. Thanks so much. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be on. And ultimately, yes, while I do have my Psycho psychological elements of the well-being work that I do. I've also run a video game business for 11 years and therefore became the de facto developer slash data slash digital strategy person. So yeah, after that coffee morning, we decided we're an action group. We're not a talking shop. So we put together a website very quickly as an initial starting point to be able to give members something, a presence online, an additional presence. So by crafting that website, which is available at wellbeinglancashire.org.uk, we suddenly have a platform for content for members. We also have a platform where we have effectively a shop front where members can join and their company can be advertised alongside other practitioners and members. Now, the real benefits of that is firstly, the exposure that you get from being on Wellbeing Lancashire's official website and we, as an organization, have significant plans to grow both a digital presence, a data strategy, and to grow as an organization that increases in exposure, becoming, in many ways, best practice for other regions to start to consider developing their own, potentially, with our help. So being an early adopter is going to get you into a really interesting position, because ultimately, as we build our membership, 
the initial earlier members will have higher exposure. They will be the first ones to appear in the search. They will be the first ones to be almost visible, seen by anyone who, who visits the website. And ultimately at the moment, the website has been up for two months, gradually started to build exposure and traffic is gradually building. We do have a significant program to build the website, to develop it, to continue to evolve it and to really start to build traffic towards it. So ultimately, as that increases and it's already started to increase, but a lot of changes are being made to make that compound exponentially, what you'll get is a lot of exposure alongside trusted partners, other accredited deliverers on a website where ultimately you are representing Wellbeing Lancashire, which represents not just the county, but a whole movement. And that digital presence is going to be increasingly important, especially for everyone, as given the increased digitization through COVID, we actually see that having that web presence is increasingly important in you actually getting work in. But it's also twofold because you get the credibility of being a member of Wellbeing Lancashire and you get the expertise to be able to deliver alongside other accredited providers. Now, our digital strategy, as we look to expand it, even more so and more pertinent is that we are looking to become a social prescriber. So the integrated care system will connect into our website, taking data of our members who are then able to be eligible to deliver on tenders and on work that we get through the funding that we secure. And that puts you in a place where being a member and being an accredited member will get you into a significant channel where our funded work, you will be our contractors, you will be the people who we assign and depending on your skill sets, depending on what you deliver, we will be able to include you in that work and therefore potentially increase the impact that you can make, increase the potential profit of your business, but also give you a chance to get into places where sometimes as a smaller provider, it's much more difficult to get into those rooms, to get into those places. And we can almost provide a footstep as together, with a significant group of members, we have a much larger footprint. We're able to get and embed into economic strategy, into industrial strategy, and all of a sudden, you can find yourself in some very, very interesting conversations, networking with some very interesting people. So as we look towards the data strategy side of things, Wellbeing Lancashire has been busy alongside Steve, who just spoke about the data he's got from businesses, but getting data from communities as well. See, we don't want to deliver well-being for the sake of delivering well-being. We want to anchor into a collective why of why we're doing it and have it so that it's measured, so that the impact and the outcomes that we achieve as practitioners has data that can represent and become case studies for the work we deliver, but also show what being delivered, how effective it is. So we can continue to evolve and use that data and use that feedback to deliver even better well-being. Because if we want it to become a priority, it needs to become sustainable. It needs to be effective. And you, you join us, even more so, will have that amplification because there's so much good work that goes on in Lancashire. But from a personal perspective, and even knowing this being in the industry, sometimes we lack a bit of interconnectivity. But standing together, arm in arm, we'll be able to walk and make so much more difference. So starting to look at going to the future, having that measurable, having that prioritised well-being response. The website provides a place for acute well-being needs. This next year we're facing, it's going to be an incredibly challenging time. And times like many of us have not experienced before. The amount of dy dynamism and the amount of change is actually quite difficult to adapt to. Yet, Wellbeing Lancashire intends to embrace that. We intend to be ready to almost be a triage for the challenges that we have, but also being wise enough to start to look, okay, so what is happening in the future? What's likely to happen? How can we start to come together to prevent that starting today? And it's important that you as practitioners be part of that future vision because our future vision digitally is to have an all-encompassing website 
And at the moment, we're gradually evolving it from the starting point to a very, very big vision of having a website that effectively becomes the trip advisor for well-being in Lancashire. Ever more so, as we look to expand that as well, you'll be part of that expansion. As well-being Lancashire grows, you will grow with us. And we will almost take you under our wings, under the umbrella, and really push forward together. And finally, what really is in it for you in terms of digital side? Well, ultimately, you'll be on the website. As the website grows, your presence will grow online. You'll be able to submit content to the newsletter, which will be sent out to hundreds and gradually thousands of members. Your events will be have a place, a home, beyond your own social media. Suddenly, we'll be shouting about you as well. And as we really look to expand out, it doesn't just start and end with a website. There will be applications. There will be more digital elements as we gradually evolve for the future because this is a project that's not going to stand still. It's already moving at speed. Come and join the train. This is the first stop and the chance for you to jump on. We won't be stopping again for a while because we're taking action. And finally, again, this is a movement. Join the movement. This is a movement that is really making a difference. And if you want to be part of the change, and if you want to really step into your own growth, this is the time. Lee, thank you so much. The passion, the eloquence, and how you explained that then was breathtaking. And I think it just gives us a minute just to pause, just to reflect on that. This is so much more than a a digital shop window. This is enabling data-driven decisions in Lancashire, which will enable people to see where hotspots are, where needs are, where requirements are, and also where solutions should be correctly targeted. We are in times where the economy is shrinking in certain ways. We need to be prudent with what requirements are met by what solutions. And that targeting of that ideally needs to be right first time. So, so much more than a digital shop window, it enables us to get a window of activity too on what's happening economically in this sector. And crucially for you as a member, whether that is something which is on your radar or not, the fact that you can contribute, as we said before, to making Lancashire the kindest county, but the ability to be plugged in. And I'm so grateful that we've got a phenomenal mind like Lee's who understands the psychological, physiological and all the other needs in addition to the digital ways of delivering that absolute, I'm going to say that phrase again, gold dust. It absolutely is. So we're going to move across now. And thanks again, Lee, for that. From here at the Wellbeing Farm, we're going to move across now to Elliot Evans and Jackie Robinson. Jackie was one of the founders of Wellbeing Lancashire and is also the founder of The Balanced Approach. And Elliot is responsible for NHS Connect My Community. So this is going to be a fantastic conversation. Jackie, just, Elliot, thank you so much. Just thought I'd pop, the, the pop that background on for you there, Jason. <laughs> Elliot, I think that's a gold dust he keeps talking about. It is. <laughs> you found it. <laughs> yeah. And that's what you get as part of being a member. This, you, Elliot, you know what? You've joined yeah. into the theme of the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> Why would people not want to sign up to be members of well, this? Exactly. This is a PVC pitch. This is about yeah. making a big difference. Give me a second. I'll just bring the video Is that the QVC on. pitch? <laughs> Oh, so Jackie, go. lovely to see you and thank One you sec. so much. I've been thank so used to using you. Microsoft Teams, I forgot how to use Zoom. <laughs> Uh, so just a little bit about me, I'm Jackie Robinson, um, I have my own business called Balance Approach and I provide health and well-being to businesses, schools and charities. I've got several hats there we go. and my other hat is um, I, um, I'm doing a contract and I work for Lancashire Beaming Network in Blackburn and um, my purpose there as a well-being manager is to get well-being out to the communities that need it the most. Um, and it is a difficult and challenging job, but uh, I'm so determined and so passionate that no one gets left behind. But today um, I'm here to interview Elliot, the lovely Elliot. Now you've all heard of TED Talks, haven't you? 
Well, we've got something better than that. We have CAD Talks. And um, I want to ask Elliot a few questions. We have been co-hosting um, uh, me as on behalf of Wellbeing Lancashire and um, Elliot, who um, works for NHS, connects my community. So without further ado, I'm going to start asking Elliot questions and he can tell us a little bit more about it. So I want to ask Elliot, how did Connect My Community come about? And if you want to tell us a little bit about your background. Well, originally uh, my role as part of the community asset development team for the Lancashire South Cumbria NHS Trust was to um, come in and find as many community groups in central Lancashire in all the different electoral wards, get them all noted down to see what's live and help then use that with the prevention and engagement team to help service users in the community find out what's going on in their own electoral ward. Um, and that was used to help uh, reduce social isolation and loneliness. Unfortunately, I started on the week that the entire world went into social isolation, which kind of, well, we'll get that up, shall we just say. Uh, so the plan was to, how can we change that? Now, I've come from a so we call a tech incubator and social net, uh, social networking sort of background. So I said, why don't we use social media? Because there'll be a multitude of people that will be using social media and we'll see whether or not we can help the groups out with their awareness and everything. So we went live on the 20th of July this year uh, with, the, with the Facebook page and the Facebook group. Uh, since then, the three months, we've seen a reach of around about three and a half thousand people per week. Uh, our group uh, has risen to around about 450 members. Uh, we'd, so we've seen lots of collaborations and uh, helped a lot of groups actually gain some funding to be able to help them move forward. And um, as such, the actual project was due to actually end in August of this year and has now been extended to March with the possibility of moving to a two to three year deal moving forward so we can help more people. That's fantastic, isn't it, Elliot? And that's what we all need. And I know when I first started off with my business, um, there was really nowhere to go and nowhere to help me, a, a sole provider. But this is the key here, is there is lots of things here that can help wellbeing providers to help others and different communities. And um, you mentioned collaboration there. That is key here in Wellbeing in Lancashire. We are all about collaboration, CAD Talks, are all about collaboration and what we do is we bring well-being providers or specialists about certain topics now we've done two and we're due to do the third one and they've just built momentum haven't they um the next question i want to ask you is, is why is it important that we collaborate well you know they're saying two heads are better than one i mean it's it's, uh, it's so important and especially in the community because we're all different people all and we're all in this together you know a COVID thing it affects everybody at the moment so we're all in it together but by collaborating you can share skills by and also resources you know if um if some groups might have members but no space whereas one group might have a massive amount of space but no members so by collaborating together they get the boast of both worlds without actually using any more expenditure so uh but in a business term for for like well-being lancashire what you could look at it is that you can have a client that will have more than one issue. There is no client that has just one issue. They have a multitude of issues, but you might only be a specialist in one. So by collaborating with another member or through, as in through Wellbeing Lancashire, you could actually look at the different members you could collaborate with, and then you share that client and you both win. And, that, and that's a great way of looking at the collaboration on this sort of uh, format. Yeah, and, th and that is what it's all about, isn't it? So when we do the CAD talks, the first one was suicide prevention. And we got um, a lot of people in the Zoom room and talking passionately about what we need to do. It's a really big problem, folks, at the moment. And um, there was a lot of passionate people and some with lived experiences. And to get those people in together, we could um, talk think about what we can do as an action plan. We don't want to be a lip service. We want to have an action group. So my next question, Elliot, to you is, what, um, what can we do with the information we collect on these CAD talks? Well, 
the the aim of the cab talks originally was to again talking about the collaboration thing you know if you get a lot of mindset trainers in a room and you ask them to talk about mindset training they'll all come to the same conclusion because they've all had that similar sort of training and there might be slight differences but in the whole it's all the same but if you get a, a, a bun, uh, if you add in a couple of different ones from a different aspect of 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 what the mind is and things like that, like a doctor about the mind and physical health that affects the mind and diet about the mind, your actual conclusions will come out differently. And that's all about, and you can learn new things and, uh, and, and different things to go towards research. So what we've done with ours is that every month after every one has been done, we all sit down as a team. We look at all the different things that went through and we pick out those little nuggets, uh, nuggets, shall we call them? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and uh, see what's uh, yes exactly yeah golden what's uh, relevant uh, to how we as a group can do because we create new community groups so we can see what's needed in that but also we can help that with different departments so our stuff does get sent to different departments we always have an nhs person from our trust in those talks so that who's in that sort of sphere who will then use that information for their own research to help build and fortify that bridge between the NHS and the community. But we always open it up to uh, one or two of the businesses. We've had a few of the Wellbeing Lancashire so, the team in there. So yeah. for people listening in here who are considering, do I become a member, what's, what's in it for me? I was, I was saying that for, as part of the membership that people are entitled to join the CAD Talks and to contribute to the CAD Talks. Yeah, I had a bit of a think about this one. And um, one of the things that we do a lot of is we invite guests in. So we have a certain amount of guests that we think, right, we'll invite these certain amount of guests in. And they have to be experts in the, in the fields of what they're talking about, um, like CEOs and different things like that. So what we, we could say with yourselves is to say, through the recommendation of Wellbeing Lancashire, if we want a couple of the businesses in, we'd pick the members because they've got the accreditation that they know what they're talking about. And it'll be important for that sort of talk. And it's a lot of feedback coming back for you guys too. Perfect. That's fantastic. So Jackie, Elliot, thank you so much for sharing that and making sure that there's that outlet valve because things are changing in front of our eyes and different stimuluses which may be creating pressurised environments are happening in front of our eyes. While we've been doing this session here, we've had an update that Rishi Sunak has extended furlough through to March. That will set hairs running in different people's minds for various different reasons. So again, we need to be at the forefront of having the toolkit between us to assist in this challenging and interesting environment. But also where some people see a challenge, let those who see opportunities to be able to share those two. Nobody will get left behind. Absolutely not. Could I just say one more? Of course you can, Elliot. Of course you can. In, in relation to the Connect My Community NHS program that runs on Facebook, if there are businesses that are looking at uh, helping in the community themselves, as in not charging the community for it as a sort of separate entity in their community groups, I think they're quite welcome to join the page. Uh, they can do a little bit about what they do in the in the in the payment side of things, but we like a little bit more of the of the of the free community group side of things as well. So if they're looking at doing a bit of both and giving a bit of social responsibility back, hop in. <laughs> if you're driven by passion, that's the crucial thing. And I think if there's that, that common objective, then that is fantastic. And like I said, it's not always about playing your wares. It's about building your network and about building the alliance across Lancashire. We will make it, well, it is already, we already know it's the kindest county, but we'll make it evidence evidenced and evidential so fantastic. Just one more thing actually can i just say elliot i know we're on time but uh, the, uh one of our next um cab talks is about funding so that's something else we can get out of it you can uh, join these uh, funding talks and find out where you can get funding because that's a really hard thing to do ju- ju- no no the, the the next sorry jackie the next cab talk oh. is not about funding oh we're no doing a fun- we're doing no, a funding no. drop-in for community well, groups we haven't got any funding for businesses. I'm no, really no, sorry. I mean to, to understand <laughs> it. Okay, so yes. we've got, we're in agile times and clearly um, there's great opportunities there for members to join into these sessions, to hear these sessions, and there will be various different yeah. things, topics. Whatever topic it is, it will be of interest to members, yes. absolutely, and it keeps it on the radar, and I think that's the key thing. Thank you both so much for that. Thank that you. is absolutely awesome. We're going to move over now to Emma. Emma is going to be talking to us now about 
kind of one of the crucial things, one of the reasons why we are here, which is the membership criteria, the standards, the values and best practice. And she's also just going to do a recap on the membership levels, just in case anybody joined us when I was waffling on at the very beginning to give some clarity, probably with a more succinct, lovely Scottish accent, explaining what's what. Emma, oh, over wow. to you. Thank you so much. Can you, can you can you see my slides? Are they up? Not yet, no, but they may take a moment. Have you clicked on share screen? There we go. Something's happening. Uh, pe people are my strong point, not tech. <laughs> Emma, I just noticed you're wearing green. Very corporate. On well, trend, on brand. Well, um, Cheryl did send us the um, the background. And then sadly, if I was to use the background, I would have looked like the invisible man. So, <laughs> so I've de declined that. And as I'm taking that, 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 Celia whispered that into my ear. And I'm just looking across the the, the, the big barn that we've got here. And Celia's in corporate green as well. So some of you still clearly got the memo. Some of us didn't. <laughs> Emma, thanks so much. And can't wait to hear what you're going to tell us. No, no thanks, and it's, it's, it's been amazing so far, so, so much value. And just to um, reiterate that value from um, what you said in the beginning, Jason, about uh, how, do you help, how do you help us, how do you become a member of this um, amazing alliance? Um, I just wanted to go over the membership because I know some people had some technical difficulties joining us in the beginning. So um, if you're loving what, you, what we do and you just want to keep um, up to date with us, then, you know, we've give us your details and we'll send you our newsletters and, and correspondence as it, as it comes out. Um, if you want to um, get the newsletter but want to be listed as a, as a business on our website and uh, with the ability to join our social media um, channels like Lee was talking about earlier, then you can do that as a, a contributor. Um, and that will cost you £60 per year. And the daddy of all memberships is this uh, provider accredited membership. Um, We've heard from um, Steve at Nawig, we've heard from Debs at the Roots of Life and from Glyn um, from the Health Innovation Campus at uh, Lancaster University. Um, and all that's included in, in our membership. Um, so uh, introductory price of £199 uh, a year, which is an absolute bargain considering you get all those things as a bonus. But for me, um, it's about being accredited um, we want to um, be the go-to um, people for businesses and you know, well-being uh, projects across the, the, the county. Um, and it's about uh, showing professionalism um, by being a member of, of our organisation. So I'm just going to uh, go through that um, now. Um, so um, as you can imagine, there's lots of um, well-being disciplines. There's... Uh, you know, lots of multidisciplinary professionals that will want to join us. And that's quite difficult to, to navigate from a, a regulatory or accredited point of view. Um, we've got health and care professionals working in certain occupations um, that legally must be regulated. And obviously they will still stay regulated. Um, there are 10 health and care regulators in the UK um, so such as myself as a, as a registered nurse I'm with the Nursing and Mid Midwifery Council and of course that wouldn't change um, being an accredited membership of Wellbeing Lancashire but we will be checking if people say that they are of a certain profession that they have um, that um, membership of the, of the governing bodies but then we have another area where we have accredited re registered occupations and um, but these aren't regulated by law However, being accredited with a professional organisation does highlight people's professionalism and their credibility. And um, I think that's what we're trying to achieve um, with Wellbeing Lancashire, being that professional and credible organisation that businesses will go to. Um, so, like I said before, professionals will want to join us from all areas of health and wellbeing. Um, and order to take action and um, we had Lee talk about um, you know we're not a talking shop we want to take action and um, it's part of our co core values to take action and, and keep delivering keep moving forward so um, we've set membership standards for those wishing to join us um, at provider level 
and wanting to be considered for Wellbeing Lancashire projects and um, going forward. So like I said, we want to be the gold dust standard. Um, just added that in following uh, <laughs> what, what Jason's been saying. So we want to be the gold dust standard for wellbeing in the region to be the go-to organisation for professionalism and credibility. Um, so um, our standards, so they're not too um, onerous, but of course there, there is some nitty gritty in there. Um, it's, it's, it's quite boring, but it's very important. Um, so our standards are based around being open and honest and with the ability to collaborate. Um, like Lee said, you know, being um, smaller businesses, being part of a, a big alliance means that we have more visibility um, and more credibility in front of bigger organisations. Um, so um, I just wanted to point out that if, if you are watching, then at this time, Wellbeing Lancashire um, does not have the, the valuable resources or capacity to engage or police multi-level marketing, network marketers, um, or anyone that, that has homemade products for application ingestion or inhalation, and therefore it's currently prohibited as part of our, our membership. Um, to um, be part of our membership, then you will have to um, provide us with documentation um, because for us, uh, delivering on larger contractual work also means um, as a, a re registered member, then you will have to show us um, what is required. So we're looking for things, um, it's, it's all in detail. I didn't want to you know, be too slide heavy with it, but we want, we're looking at things such as professional liability, indemnity insurance um, of at least five million pounds each, as well as looking at continuous professional development and your uh, certificates and your qualifications, uh, just as a, a starter for 10, as, as Jason likes to, to, to call it. So um, if, you're, if you're interested and you want more information or you want to um, you know, uh, register your, your interest at the minute, then email is at membership at wellbeinglancashire.org.uk. And, uh, you know, I, I think you'll agree we've, we've got a great offering um, and why would you not want to would join us because it's, it's, it's just going to be massive and it's well needed at the minute. Emma, absolutely fantastic. What a wonderful, clear, concise set of membership benefits which we've got on there and also what a wonderful, clear um, offering which is on there and what I would say is if you are watching this and you are either keen to know more or just to sign up be it at whatever level because we want to build the alliance we want to build the team if you, you don't put a light under a bushel I think somebody once said might have even been in the bible what you do is you want to share that light and with, across Lancashire we need to share that light with regards to access to the membership so what I would say is if you are watching this make a note of that email and contact us but you know what you can even drop it in a comment you can drop it by the Facebook accessing through inboxing on there carrier pigeon or otherwise let us know if you're interested we'll arrange the conversation we can have a digital coffee with you and we can just talk you through in a little bit more detail about the membership package for you to get you signed up which is on there then what we don't want is for people to be left behind and left alone from this now what i want to do now is to move over and emma if we're right just to hide the slides that'd be absolute gold dust thank you so much more gold dust more of a theme today because we're going to move into now we're going to move into the question and answer session and we've got some phenomenal people here who have been endorsers with us through the voyage as we've gone from the chaotic to the orderly and we always said we were going to be action driven not talking shop and i hope that's evident to the people who are going to be talking to shortly that actually we need to make sure that we get things done the right way with the right people and with the right endorsers so we've got a couple of people here who are going to be making sure that we have the ability to take on board some of the wisdom i'm just having a look i was just making sure then i wasn't getting any more information we've not had any more extensions of furlough or anything like that so we're going to raise some questions with the panel but firstly i just want to confirm and to introduce please the panel who are going to be there for question and answering and also just one point to mention is all of this technological wizardry which has been happening would you believe the person the key person bringing all this together is elise elise i hope you're there elise from the well-being farm has been bringing all of this together 18 year old and she's bringing this which kind of tells you everything what skills 
amazing stuff. So the people who we're going to have in the panel, which I want to introduce you to now, please, are Adrian Leather. Adrian, if you can see you on screen, that'd be fantastic. Thank you. Talib Yassin, Sinjin Crean, and Liz Hardwick, who's the co-founder of Digital Lancashire and also director of Digital Lancashire 2. We've got Sinjin, we've got Adrian, and I'm just seeing Liz, I can see your avatar, we can't see you yet. Um, Sinjin, real wonderful to see you on screen too. Yep. It, it, so, it's, it's saying that we can't open the camera, that's all. Um, yeah. Uh, right, okay. But there's one moment, that might okay. be just as well, we give a compliment to Elise there, because we might just need her to enable videos. There we go. Hello. Yes, <laughs> I knew that compliment would come in fr fruitful and useful. Sinjin, wonderful to see you without a face mask as well. I can see uh, <laughs> the man behind the mask. Great hair. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I should be greyer than this at my age, so I'll send a bit over if you don't mind having a bit of an afro sending over. Liz, fantastic. Adrian, fantastic. And Talib, I don't know if Talib is still on here. Talib, we just might need to just to see you there, young man, also. So yes, I am here, but... Not sure I can start video. Okay, well, if you come on from video, then that will be a Brucey bonus. That would be absolutely wonderful. And Elisa, I don't know if there's any magic that you can do, but what we'll do is just to make sure we get every bank for our book for time, because we've got an A team around here. As a team of professionals who have been, Tally, I can see you there, fantastic. As a team of professionals and endorsers of what, what we've been doing for Wellbeing Lancashire, and I pray after this, you still want to be endorsers of what we're doing for Wellbeing Lancashire. One of the first questions I wanted to ask yourselves is why are you endorsing this and why um, do Lancashire wellbeing providers need to be on your radar? Why do they need to be on there as an accessible alliance? Liz, ladies first. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I think it, it goes back to probably the timing as well. I mean, um, so I'm representing Digital Lancashire here, but I also have a couple of digital businesses myself. But you know, everyone is struggling in their own different ways at the moment. So I think being able to have a, a collective of people where we can link up with you guys. So Digital Lancashire can link up with Wellbeing Lancashire. And if we need to cross pollinate links and referrals and share ideas and support each other, then, you know, now is no better time, I don't think, you know, because um, everyone needs it especially with our digital um, workers and our communities. Um, well-being is, is the top of their agenda at the moment because, it, it, you know, mental health is a problem. Um, you know, a, a well-being in general is real struggle. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's new to some people who have suddenly been forced into working from home and using digital skills and tools that they might not necessarily do. So outside of our digital community we support, there's also businesses that, for the very first time have had to be remote workers and so I think that brings with it all the stresses if you're not used to it um, that we need to partner up um, with other you know umbrella organizations that you know link the two together and you know what you were saying before about Lancashire being I'm really proud to be in Lancashire because we do help each other and I think it's getting stuff done and having that action of let's have an idea let's get it done and to see you guys turn around so quickly to having events online and communicating with each other you know well done because you know especially in these challenging times this is exactly what's needed please thank you so much for that thank you and sinjin lovely to see you i'm delighted to be here um jason as you know um at one of the coffee days that we had behind masks with spitting llamas, I believe, or um, alpacas. <laughs> uh, left a, Cheryl has left a, a, a very strong image on, on my uh, memory. I'm a big fan of this, as you are well aware, and I've already had meetings, uh, uh, Emma and I met yesterday to discuss opportunities to go forward, and just an example of the type of benefits of this. I, if I wanted to give you a headline as to why I felt that this was an important uh, let's call it collaboration because that's what it is then um i think my headline is quite simple and if steve's on the call he'll be sick of the death of me going on about it uh, and that is that lancashire is in um an unhealthy position relatively for a reason uh the reason is multifactorial environmental um 
cultures, education, access, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Huge number of issues. But there's no doubt that there is a political issue at, at work here, um, which I feel is reflected around terms we've heard like northern powerhouse and leveling up. And um, Adrian and I are working on a, a couple of bits together. And, and I think we both agree that at the moment, access to um, large elements of perhaps funding, technology, um, workforce, um, if supported by the government, seems to get plonked in the middle of Manchester and doesn't seem to make its way into the, the Northwest powerhouse. I heard Steve coin a, um, coin a phrase the other day. And I believe that the advantage of collaborations like this is quite simple, noise. Lots and lots of noise illustrating the incredible talents and skills that we have available in this county. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, Steve, I'm going on about the same thing as usual to be still here. Um, and Adrian's sick of the sight of me going on about it, but it, it is one of the advantages of bringing people together like this, um, because um, we will begin to solve our own solutions, as Liz has hinted. Uh, we're very good at working and therefore identifying problems, not hypothesizing problems. Um, and the outcomes, the impacts that we create will be our narrative for that noise. This is a great opportunity to start the noise. Perfect, thank you very much indeed. Talib, over to you. Adrian, we'll do you last, no particular reason or order, by the way. Um, thanks, um, Jason. Um, it's been comedy gold having you on, comparing. Um, I think just to build on what Sinjin said, I think it's not that long ago in the NHS where it was a kind of, you know, go hard or go home kind of culture. Uh, and I think that's changed. I think the other thing is we're very good in the NHS at reaching out to other NHS organisations, but we're not so good at knowing what else is out there to help us. Well-being in the broadest sense, you could argue, has kind of come of age through COVID. But we 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 have always had organisations that have embraced it, but it's not always been universal. And I think in the current times, what's great about this um, collective approach is it means there's a, a place where I think our NHS organisations can go and reach out to and say, who's out there that could help us with this? Um, just this hour on this session, listening to all of you speak has been kind of my hour, my hour of well-being this week. Because probably like everyone else and other people have said, I spend 10 hours a day on Teams talking about banal things like testing for COVID-19 and restoration of services with often no time to get up and enjoy the outside or, or do all of those things. That's happening right across our services. So this is a really current issue. So we had a, just as a simple example, we had a conversation yesterday on our hospital cell that brings together people across Langston and South Cumbria to say, how do we best you know, support our organisations to do things differently? And we all talked from the most senior leaders to needing to make sure we look after each other, we look out for each other, and that we think about this way of working and both the upsides and the downsides, because there are plenty of downsides, but also how we support all of our colleagues working in health and social care and wider to do the jobs that they need to do because they're really important. So it's rekindled my enthusiasm for it. And it was, I wish I could be there where you are because it was great. I, I support what Sinjin said. It was great to be in that session. And I have to say last week, I was really looking forward to driving down into darkest Lancashire and being in the same place with everyone else because um, that Groundhog Day feeling, we're all feeling it. Uh, and missing all the fringe benefits of, you know, being with people, all the other, you know, um, inconsequential conversations that come. So I think this is a great opportunity to support that wider work across our system. Um, and I think our system's getting stronger at working together across local government and health. Um, but I hope that with your help and support, we can also signpost people to, uh, accredited people with skills who can help our organisations get well-being as part of their DNA. 
Fantastic, thank you. And just to that, Ems, would you believe I've just had a news flash passed to me by Celia, passed over in a socially distant way, saying that business events for up to 30 can now go ahead. That's the latest word on the street. So it's been announced today. So that will be wonderful, which means, Tally, the kettle will be on. There might not be cake, because I might have had the last piece, but the kettle will be on. So thank you so much. And I think you touched in on a key piece there with regards to the people looking at this thinking, well, what's the benefits for me to be members? Well, actually, there's a group of people who are itching to know about them as members, which, as in yourselves, and we're going to move on to Adrian in a moment. And I think that's an absolute route to market, possibly for them, but not for the sake of it, actually, because there's a need that they may be able to provide to. And you can't mind read that these businesses or these organisations or these providers are out there. So if we can help to shape them, and equally, if we're gathering data on those needs of what they can provide and what the needs are, then perhaps, just perhaps, we can make things a little bit better and assist to be perhaps even a bit of a Wi-Fi, as we said the other day, for wellbeing in Lancashire. Adrian, over to you. I wasn't treating you mean and keeping you keen, by the way. Great to see you. And, and you as well, Jason, and well done to, to you and the whole team for just getting this off the ground and staging this so, so quickly. It's been absolutely fantastic. Okay. I mean, what, what you're doing really, and this is the fundamental point, you're making health everyone's business, and it needs to be. And in Lancashire, we've got considerable ground to make up. I mean, let's just, let's just reiterate some of those statistics. We know that um, Lancashire's health and well-being of our working age population is the key factor, according to work which was done by the NHSA report, Health is Wealth 2019, in our lower levels of productivity. So Lancashire's productivity as a result of poor mental health and then its physical health is 20% behind the UK average. We've got 77,000 people before COVID who are actually on incapacity benefits. That's 11% of Lancashire's workforce. That equates to a lost value in terms of people's productivity down to mental health, poor mental health and physical activity, lost value to Lancashire's economy of £650 million pounds worth of, of GVA every year. Now, what is worse is that our health, our health is not improving. And COVID, as we know, has further created inequalities, disparities, and it's just stacking up a whole host of unmet health need, which the, the, the NHS is doing an absolute valiant job. It is working its cotton socks off to sort out. But there's one thing that we need to do, and this is where I do think that Wellbeing Lancashire will come in. It provides capacity, opportunity. And, and if people are going to access provision, that's built on relationships and confidence. And I've got to say that when we've actually scratched the surface with the work that we've been doing with Sinjin and Talib around the UKRI industrial strategy, um, which is focusing on the health and well-being of our working age population, there's a whole segment of our working age population where it is the norm for self-neglect, a lack of self-care, a lack of um, connectivity with mainstream health services and that's why um, I believe that Wellbeing Lancashire can come in it provides another route to opportunity we've got some very diverse communities in Lancashire you're providing a diverse range of solutions you're a partnership and network based solution you've proven that you can you can make it work digitally you're very inclusive I think that mental health and physical health you're not one or the other you're both and you're able to provide um, solutions in partnership with employers and other commissioners and people who are working with and around businesses. And so if you're going to help people turn that, turn the dial on, on health and therefore productivity, I think that you're, you're the people who can, who can really make that work. And I think as well, the other bit to remember about Lancashire's population is we're slightly older as well as a working age population. So more than one in three of all people in, in Lancashire who are in employment are over 50. And so it's great that you've got people on board like Liz, because again, we know that digital, digital uh, capability and confidence is also critical to self-care and people being able to access opportunities to improve that health and wealth trajectory. So for me, um, really glad to be part of the partnership. 
was there during the early stages as we get our um, our project business health matters off the ground which is one of the UK uh, national industrial strategy uh, challenge fund funded uh, projects it will go in over the next couple of days um, we, we've got a, a multi-million pound bid which we hope to be able to confirm uh, in the early part of the new calendar year working with the university uh, and the LEP and then we would like to have further conversations with you about how we make that connectedness real and there are as well as the as well as the opportunities and the links through people like yourself and the networks that you like boost and the chambers there's a there's a little bit of money in there for for that social prescribing intervention as well just to oil the wheels and build those relationships and build the confidence of the partners. So and I, I'm having conversations with, with you, Jason, but with people like Emma as well. And we're going to just work out how we can make though get some leverage on those wheels and start to make the, the engineering work over the next six months. But well done to you. Brilliant, brilliant piece of work. Love it. Thank you very much indeed. And again, linking to the economic side, it's so important. It really is. And between us all, you know what, we can raise rock bottom in this county. We really can. And even if there's some of the political or socioeconomic things which have been pitted against us, we've got some strong grit and we've got some strong innovation in this county. And we can raise rock bottom. If Wellbeing Lancashire can assist some of that provision of those who've got some solutions to assist that, that can't be a bad thing. Thank you so much for explaining the benefits to members and why being a member provides this advantage. And it's such an incredible opportunity for people to be plugged in to this end. It really is. One point, Talib, I've just been asked to say, llamas don't spit. So, Sinjin, sorry, llamas don't spit. Sorry, Talib, I was uh, casting oh, aspersions. Sorry. Oh, they're llamas don't, at the very least. <laughs> I've just got a couple of questions which have come through, and I think I might have to probably answer some of these. So here we go, freestyle. How will Wellbeing Lancashire be promoted and where? Wellbeing Lancashire will be promoted online, it will be promoted through social media, and as memberships increase, we'll start to develop a, man, sorry, a, a marketing strategy which will be more aligned to the elements of need. One of the reasons why we're doing the slightly reduced, well, not slightly, we're doing the reduced membership is to enable those who are pioneers to shape that marketing, to inform that marketing, because for marketing to identify the personas, the data usage and the personalization of messages which are right, we need to learn as we go. Hence the pioneer membership. So you can assist in that marketing, which is on there. But whatever we identify as our strategy for that, well, that will be delivered in an agile way. In other words, we'll always be looking for X the unknown with regards to what we do and where we do that. We will look to optimize digital routes to market, physical routes to market, each one teach one routes to market. Hopefully, what we produce will be a sticky enough passionate, passionate point that will make people want to join into that. So I hope that answers that one um, to the best that I can do for that. In other words, you don't say we've got a plan for marketing now and that's it, and we drop the mic like Jay-Z on stage. No, we keep it going as it is. Are there differing rates for non-profits, charities, for wellbeing Lancashire packages? That's the sort of question I'd ask with my thriftiness. So if there's interest there, let's talk. If there's interest there, let's talk. I suspect there'll be something we can do, it says in an Arthur Daly type of way. Absolutely, of course there will be. If there's interest, we can make it happen. I hope that's all right with the rest of the team, by the way. There will be a wide range of members that offer similar wellbeing um, services. How will this be managed? I'll tell you how it will be managed. And I didn't want to use the P word, but actually it's kind of like a procurement framework. It's almost like when you get select lists. I'm an ex-contract auditor and I didn't really want to reveal that, but that will be sort of informing that where you can create panels, you can create criteria underneath the bonnet of how scientifically you can identify the right providers for their. Don't forget the need in, great, in, in sort of the greater Lancashire area is enormous. The need is massive. It's not a crowded market. We've got solution providers, but the needs are massive. So if you think that you've got a service to provide get yourself on the team sheet get yourself signed up and that's one of the the benefits for that absolutely um that's that piece then and then the final one that i've got on here although i think a couple have popped in on the side as well what's the importance of what's about the importance of people with lived experience 
So not everybody may be a practitioner under an accredited way. Absolutely. And that's why part of the membership form will be for accredited. And I'm saying it totally wrong, accredited even from that piece. But we will always be inviting people who've got experiential learning. This is not about exclusion. Far from it. This is about inclusion. So if you have got experiential learning, we can capture that. We've got a back catalogue where we've worked in the past with organisations of people who may not have had the privilege of getting the accreditation or getting the qualification. But we've got incredible experience and that can sometimes you'd be quite surprised actually even if you've not got accreditation sometimes that can be commuted too so if you've got an interest if you've got an ability to help get signed up we don't know about you we can't work with it from there more questions have appeared at the side here i'm gonna to have to get a drink before i carry on with these then can you confirm how long the membership introductory price is for i'm gonna say three months I might, I'm looking to my right. Yeah, three months. Nobody's yanked me to the side then. Not the Sandman then, three months. How will well-being Lancashire help young people? All people of Lancashire will be included and we'll be looking to help people. Not only people are young people, what I'd love is that we can say the legacy of this. We're helping people who are not even born yet in this county. Because at the end of the day, this county, the people who will be the producers taking care of us when we are older, we need to be looking after them, but also the people who are not even born yet. So we'll be looking at the full elements. And just going back to what Adrian said, hooking back to there on the theme of industrial strategies, one of the reasons why that is key, because you're not just looking at the producers of today, it's about creating the working environments of the producers of the future. That is crucial. And some of those people, for example, we work closely with Primary Engineer over in Burnley, just to give a mention, where they look at the engineers of the future and the skills that they could have and they could use. We've got our experience if we've been school governors. There's incredible insights and elements regarding the work which has been done with schools by members as well. So, but always we'll be looking to be challenged. What are we doing? What can we do better? This isn't a talking shop, this is an action shop. And we will get some stuff not necessarily right all the time but we'll take that on board and we'll move that in the way then how will members be accredited could that probably point you back to emma's presentation before regarding we will have a criteria and from that criteria we'll use that then to benchmark we will not always say yes from the accreditation point of view we will hold to a high standard what is required that doesn't mean that if you're not accredited you're not in the loop but we need to make sure that this is not a race to the bottom this is about raising rock bottom so with regards to the accreditation but we will take it in manageable chunks and we will look at what the demand is and what the services are and we'll do the checks and balances so much so sinjin has been talking with emma and that's not just a one hour conversation that will be an ongoing conversation as we learn what we do and we start to lift the fog i've had a final question which has come in i'm going a couple of minutes over can you pay the membership in installments yes Yes, if you need to pay in instalments to get you on that, we can do that on a subscription basis. So we'll be shaping up the elements, the financial elements to that. But what we don't want to do is to exclude anybody who has got the ability to do that. But we'll get that shaped up in the relevant T's and C's. But it's about inclusion at the end of the day. So as I start to wrap up and just bring everything to a close now, Adrian, Sinjin, Liz and Talib, any final words from yourselves? Oops, oh, you've all been all muted. You. You've all been muted. Oh, hang on. Liz, I've seen I'm you gonna, I'm been gonna, muted. I'm going to jump in and just say, you know, I think hopefully this is the start of great things for Lancashire and, and other umbrella organisations working together because very much it's, you know, going to be needed more and more. And based on Adrian's stats earlier, that, you know, the really shocking kind of statistics back it up as well. So, um, yeah, any help that we can kind of link people together is always a good thing. And I think, uh, Going back to that inclusion and cohesion, that's very much um, on my personal agenda as well. So, um, yeah, I think you're knocking at an open door with lots of organisations that know this is needed. So, um, yeah, good luck. Brilliant. Let's make this happen. Thank you. I just wanted to just say, you know, great session. Well done. You've got to keep finding that, that gold dust for Lancashire. You know, that, that, that's what we do need to find. As, as Sinjin quite rightly said, we, we've got a challenge to get ourselves to develop that platform to get our profile high within the Northwest and with the national government. And I think opportunities and innovation 
and, and just the energy which you're harnessing here will allow us to do that. So well done. And it's really important that we all get behind this. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. Uh, Salivin Sinjin, any final words? Thank you. Um, I'll just reiterate what colleagues have said, but I think um, we need to take away not, the not just the existing opportunities of collaboration and products. I think one of the most important points that's been made is the pipeline. It's the generational effect that we've got to leave a legacy for others to step into and drive forward. It, it is, this isn't a time-limited project. This is an investment in a regional's life and existence. Thank you so much. Thank you. And Talib, final words from your good self? Uh, just, just to say we, you know, we need to be part of a wider collaboration. You know, the NHS does great things, but it doesn't do great things on its own. Um, and so all of these collaborations, these engagements, you know, realising there's people out there like yourselves trying to support us means it feels doable. Um, I reiterate what Adrian said, it's a huge challenge with some of the inequalities and deprivation issues we're dealing with. And we're only going to drive that forward if we work as, uh, as a system and local communities. So totally committed to that. And I think our new independent chair, David Flory in the ICS, will be right behind that. Um, so the more we can connect with people, the greater chance I think we've got of success, you know, whether that's for the one or the many. So totally behind it and look forward to um, being involved and supporting more events like this, however I can. Thank you. Thank you all so much. And thank you to everybody who's been on the team sheet. I'm mean, going to look on the team sheet. Wow. From the introduction from Steve, from Glyn, giving us the tour de force around the Health Innovation Campus. Then we had Deb with the Roots to Life and the elements on that side. Then Steve in there with the Northwest Employee and it's changed now, experience group. We've then got the website and the great stuff that Lee showed us and the benefits to that digital workshop, sorry, that digital shop um, window that we've got on there. Then we had Elliot and we had Jackie with the CAD talks. These are all activities for you to be able to join in as a member. And then Emma then explained the different membership levels that we've got. I hope from the questions that were fired, we've touched on those. What I would say is keep the conversation going. If you have got a message, if you've got a query, contact us either on this thread, either with the Facebook inbox with our email address at membership at wellbeinglancashire.org.uk. Let us know how we can be here to help you. What I'm hoping for from this is that that team that came from that coffee meeting, coffee shop to those lunchtime sessions to the meetings here at the Wellbeing Farm that Celia's kindly put on for us and that is now our home on here through to where we are getting to now which is as a formal entity which is there to shape up you see interaction this is not a talking shop we are here for actions and we are going to get everything right as we go along that's agile that's the world that we're working in but if we can learn from what we're doing and we can shape this up and if we can raise rock bottom create a legacy pipeline as Sinjin said and if we can provide an ability for providers of well-being services to not be anonymous but to be part of an alliance surely that's not a bad thing it's fair, to say, it's fair to say it's far from a crowded market with regards to the suppliers which are in there. We've heard from those who are closer to the market forces than ourselves, with Adrian, Sinjin, Liz and Talib, that there's a crying need for these services to be provided. What we need to do is to help out in the ordering from that side. Celia, you've been incredibly camera shy, but incredibly <laughs> gold dust yourself there with regards <laughs> to the hospitality today. Come on, come round here in a I'll social distance here. way. In I've, a social I've been passing way, in the questions, so <laughs> hopefully we've got them all answered. And I just want to say, Thank you again, Elise. There is no way that we could have done this without you. Oh, Elise, can absolutely. I just point out, Elise, if you can come on camera so we can just come acknowledge on. who you are, because Elise is part of my team. She's 18 years old and has run this entire event completely without any technical hiccups whatsoever. And I'm so proud of her. So she doesn't want to come on board. Oh, she's she's at uni shy. at the moment. Has given up her lunch hour at uni to just run this. 
So well done, Elise. <laughs> and Elise, I think you're showing an exemplification of digital in Lancashire as well as, well as well-being in Lancashire. So watch for Liz giving you a curly finger there as well. Can I have everybody else with the screens on, please? Yeah. That would be gorgeous. And you take just a picture. Yeah, and you take a picture. Cheryl, now Cheryl, you've yeah, been yeah. uncharacteristically quiet on this day, but I've probably had my phone blowing up with the various messages and everything else, but nobody puts Cheryl in the corner. Thank you so much for all the hard work, putting this together, herding cats with people like myself who are a bit on the uh, less organised side, should we say, thriving in the moment. So thank you so much for that. Emma, for the great hard work in shaping up the membership and the accreditations. Elliot, thank you so much for the explanation and all the great stuff with the introductions to the CAD Talks. Steve, for the incredibly generous opportunity for businesses and providers to become part of NOEEG, but also for your incredible dynamism and the magic we're going to get with regards to the data. That's just going to blow things through the water with regards to identify data-driven decisions for where difference can be made. Lee, building on from that side, everything you've done from us on the digital side, but actually that's a drop in the ocean compared to all the other stuff that you're doing. Cheryl, have you got your hand up? Are we going to hear a word from you? Yeah, just, just a quick one. We've, we've also got some of the uh, the wider wellbeing founding team on Facebook who've been following up and answering questions as well. So thanks to uh, Joe Lafabor and, um, and some of the other team as well, Debs, helping out. Thank you. Brilliant stuff, Jackie and the gang as well. So if we've not included anybody in the end credits, because we're not going to scroll those down, we sincerely apologise, but that's not been done by anything other than just because of the speed that we've been going at from everything we've covered on here. So the crucial thing is, we've hopefully given you a bit of entertainment for 90 minutes over your lunch today. That's what we've given. What we'd like to, you to give, if you're watching this, is to sign up as a member. There's different levels of membership. You can flow in from one to the other. Let's get you on the team sheet. Stronger as an alliance, we can do that. We can raise rock bottom, make Lancashire kinder, and we can really get that train going, as Lee said, Lee said and get that carriages added on to deliver some great good. So we're going to stay behind for coffee for a little bit, but I'm going to bring this to a formal close now. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Thank you very much indeed. I must now coffee time for a quick coffee. Thank you. Thanks everyone. I'm ready for a waffle.